Good morning, class. And uh, yesterday we had started with a discussion of the poem "Tale of Custard the Dragon," and uh, this uh, poem is written in the form of, or it is a ballad. It tells a story, and in a very musical, rhythmic, rhyming way. And as we read the poem, we are going to learn a very important lesson. One of them is that yes that appearances are very deceptive. At the beginning of the poem, till what we have discussed yesterday, what have we found out about uh, the characters or the people in this poem? Belinda, the young girl in this poem, she has these pets. One of them is, yes? What are the pets she has? Can you tell me, Belinda? She had a dog, mustard. She had a kitten, yes, ink, there was a mouse, blink, and there was a dragon. And the dragon's name was Custard, right? And Custard was very different from what you expect a dragon to behave like. So he was very, what, scared and did not want to be with the other pets and he just wanted to stay safe in his Cage. Yes, he looked like a dragon. He was tall and big and huge and ferocious. He had the scales and he had the spikes also. He breathed fire and the smoke came out of his nose. But he was a very timid, scared dragon, right? So yes, so all the qualities here, we talk about the dragon and the other pets laughing at him and that a personification, yes. And also that uh, how the other animals, they made fun of him. Even Belinda, <coughs> just look at Belinda, this young girl, she would go and tickle the dragon and uh, she would make fun of the dragon, right? And uh, the dragon wanted to stay safe. We have come across uh, the refrain, the line that has been repeated at the end of every stanza. Can you tell me what is the line that has been repeated? Yes, what is the line that has been repeated? Really, oh, truly, oh, yeah. Find the line for me and tell me. Okay, I'll share the screen with you all so you can all just have a look. Yes, so here, and a really, oh, truly, oh, little pet dragon. Yes. Now, what about it? Even Belinda was a brave girl. So she was full of. Uh, energy. She was not scared of anyone. She was such a brave girl. Then ink and blink. So ink, the mouse, the blink, the kitten, they could also chase lions. And the mustard, the little dog, he was as brave as a tiger. But who was the coward? Who was afraid? It was custard. He just cried. He said, no, don't take me out and don't scare me. Give me a cage and I'm happy over there. Right? So he just wanted to stay away from all this. Now look at this, please, here. Look at this stanza, all of you. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful, without any pity. She would keep on tickling the dragon. And the dragon was so terrified, was so, you know, like scared. Ink, blink, and mustard. They rudely called him Percival. Percival. Right, uh, it's a, a mythological uh, character, someone very brave, right? Showing extraordinary uh, uh, courage. So they would call him that, right? So they would make fun of him and uh, they would uh, compare him with that person, Percival. It's an allusion, it's a reference to that person. Yeah, so they would call him Percival, but he was not Percival, he was Custard the dragon, right? So just make him, you know, remind him that, see, you, you are not uh, as brave as you think. And uh, why are you behaving like this? And he just wanted to be away in his cage. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the really, truly cowardly dragon. So all of them would make fun of him. Belinda giggled till she shook the house and blink said weak, which is giggling for a mouse. 
ink and mustard rudely asked his age when custard cried for a nice safe cage that are you a baby are you a child that you want to go and hide in your cage how old are you they would make fun of him right in this way belinda would laugh and the mouse would say weak and all of them would uh, you know like uh, make fun of him because he was not as brave and ferocious like the custard should be or like the dragon should be suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound repetition so please keep on writing in your books also suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around meowch cried ink and ouch cried belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window and all of a sudden you know they heard a nasty sound they're making fun of uh, custard and dragon they're teasing him they're tickling him they're calling him percival making fun of him and all of a sudden they heard a nasty sound suddenly suddenly repetition mustard growled and they all looked around meowch cried ink and ooh cried belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window window is window once again it's the poetic liberty the poets they take the liberty of changing the spelling so it suits their rhyme scheme belinda window okay right your slangs you know like you people speak nowadays so here the poet has taken that liberty and he has every right to do so he changed the spelling of window okay what is window window note down please pistol in his left hand pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright his beard was black one leg was wood it was clear that the pirate meant no good pistol in his left hand pistol in his like like you have the what is it the charge of the light brigade isn't it so right so he he had one pistol in this hand and he had a pistol in the other and he held in his teeth a cutlass and a knife between his teeth he was holding his beard was black one leg was wood it was clear that the pirate meant no good who is a pirate yes what do pirates do and where do we find pirates can you give me an answer yes who tell me what are pirates what does it mean so this pirate all of a sudden he was climbing the window and he was looking very dangerous he had a pistol in both the hands and he had this knife in between his teeth and one leg he was wooden what yes and the pirate meant no good yes who are pirates have you heard of pirates so pirates uh, yes they are uh, said to be you know like uh, the decoits uh, the robbers of the sea they come and attack a ship and the loot on take away all the goods and whatever they can find isn't it right so he he he's not a sailor of the ship he he's not the sailor over there in the ship so these pirates are there and they go and attack other ships okay and uh, yes so the pirate here he was looking very dangerous how because he had a pistol in both hands he had this knife and he came you know very dangerously climbing through the window and uh, the way he looked uh, and the way he came all armed it was very clear that his intentions were not good and as it is what do pirates do they attack they take away the goods isn't it right belinda paled and she cried help help but mustard fled with a ye terrified yelp ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blink strategically mouse hold so what happened to all the brave people who were the brave people of the house belinda and her pets but when they saw the pirate what did they do what did they do belinda paled she was so scared and she cried help help but who would she call because what happened to mustard he ran away yelped he barked he went off ink went disappeared trickling disappeared to the bottom of the household and mouse he just went in his hole mouse hole 
That is what mice do. So what happened? Who was left there? Belinda and the pirate. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine. Clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon with a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm. He went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. Who came to the rescue? Who turned out to be the bravest? Yes? Who turned out to be so brave? Unexpectedly. The dragon. He was always such a coward. He was scared of everything. But when the moment came, when the need aroused, or when the moment was there, they required someone to be brave and strong. Who was that? It was Custard, the dragon, whom they had thought was a coward. What did he do? He jumped up and he was snorting like an engine. He was making that very scary sound. Clashed his tail, he's crushing his tail, right? Like irons in a dungeon. So like the prisoners, they clash, like they are tied with the irons to the dungeon. What is a dungeon? It's in a prison, right? So the prisoners are there tied and uh, yes, here. So he's that making that, uh, clashing his, moving his tail and he's coming and with a clatter and a clank and a jangling sperm, sperm with that movement. He went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. Robin, a bird, how it attacks the worm, how it sees the worm wriggling on the earth and how it just jumps at it and grabs it. So yes, in a minute, what did Custard do? Jumped at the pirate. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon. The pirate did not expect the dragon to be there. He thought, okay, so it's a small house and let me go over there and uh, let's see what I can find. And gulped some grog from his pocket flag on. So he just took out his flask with his drink and he had a, a drink of that. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit and custard gobbled him every bit. The pirate just stared, oh, where did this dragon come from? And then he drank, uh, you know, he had something to drink and he started shooting at Custard, but they didn't hit him. And what did Custard do? Custard gobbled him every bit, like a robin at a worm. The robin attacking the worm. What did Custard do? He jumped at the pirate. He said, no, you're not getting away from me. And he attacked the pirate and gobbled him. What does gobbled mean? What does gobbled mean? Yes, ate him. Okay, now look at this stanza once again. I'll do it uh, simultaneously. Up jumped custard, snorting like an engine. Simile, right? A comparison. And we have the word like and as. Clashed his tails like iron in a dungeon. Once again, like irons in a dungeon. What's a dungeon? It's a prison, right? An underground prison you have. And clashing, making that sound. Clashing, clatter, clank, jangling. What are these words? Can you look at them? Can you tell me? Yes, yeah. Look at these, all of you, yeah? Clashed, clatter, clank, jangling. What are these words? These are sound words. What do we call words which are similar to the sounds they make? Can anybody tell me what do we call such words? What do we call this device? Yes? What do we call it? Onomatopoeia. We have discussed it or not? Yes, or onomatopoeia, or onomatopoeia. Simon, very good. Good girl. So she's given me the answer. Yes, what are the sound words over here? Snorting, clashed, clatter, clank, jangling. Isn't it? Right? And then 
he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm who is he over here custard and there is personification isn't it yes so he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm the pirate gaped at belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon he fired two bullets but they didn't hit and custard gobbled him every bit so poor pirate belinda embraced him mustard licked him no one mourned for his pirate victim so belinda is very happy she gave him a big hug mustard there licking him when no one cried no one felt sorry for the pirate oh thank god he's gone ink and blink in glee did gyrate glee in happiness they're doing the dance they're shaking their bodies they're moving around the dragon that ate the pirate so they're dancing around the body of the pirate and showing the happiness yeah the pirate is dead isn't it right so belinda embraced him who is him over here who is him who is him who did they embrace they embraced what who custard the dragon yes right Yes, custard. Right. So thank God someone is awake and giving me the answers. Baki to all of you, I don't know what. But presently, up spoke little dog mustard. I'd have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke ink, and up spoke blink. We ha we'd have been three times as brave, we think. And custard said, I quite agree. that everybody is braver than me so when all the thing was settled down the pirate is dead everybody has done their happy dance around the body of the pirate then mustard said uh, well i i would have been very brave i'm twice as brave you know but i got a little flustered flustered a little confused a little scared i i did otherwise i'm a very brave person and then ink and blink also spoke we would have been three times brave and custard say yes i agree everybody is braver than me you all are much braver than i am okay so now they're all making excuses for their behavior why they were not able to save uh, belinda why they were not able to kill the pirate and of course custard was able to do that belinda still lives in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a really a true little pet dragon little pet dragon belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage okay now just tell me what do you think is the message of this poem we're talking about a ballad here there has to be a message what do you think is the message of this poem can you tell me yes so it's a very simple story very simple poem here what is the message can you tell me what is the message what is it is it a, yes let me wait for an answer from you all what is it about it's about bravery is it do you have to be be brave always just because you have a big muscular body is it mean that you be, go on uh, showing your strength every day or is it okay if you show your strength when the need arises what is the message of the story do you have to show you are strong to be a strong person 
or even a meek person, a small person can also be brave when the need arises. Now tell me, what do you think is the message of this story?